We have three great, great companies doing uh, somewhat different variations, but they're all looking very good. From the beginning of the China virus, all nations have understood that our top priority must be to develop a vaccine as quickly as possible to end the pandemic and get life back to normal. The successful vaccine will not only save millions of lives, it will put an end to the restrictions and some of the things that go on and have to go on in the meantime. Today, I want to discuss the historic progress we're making to deliver a safe and effective vaccine in record time. And uh, there's never been anything like this ever in our history. There's never been in, in history, period, world history. Since January, America's brilliant doctors and scientists have been working around the clock. These are the best medical minds in the world, by far, and the vaccines are going through the gold standard of clinical trials and uh, very heavy emphasis placed on safety. Three vaccines are already in the final stage. Joe Biden's anti-vaccine theories are putting a lot of lives at risk, and they're only doing it for political reasons. It's very foolish. It's part of their war to try and discredit the vaccine now that they know that we essentially have it. We'll be announcing it fairly soon. Essentially have it. As part of Operation Warp Speed, my administration's manufacturing all of the most promising vaccines in advance. And actually, it'll be fairly long in advance. As soon as a vaccine is approved, the administration will deliver it to the American people immediately. Distribution will begin. I got to interrupt here for the record. Uh, Chris Wilson put together that uh, new logo for us, and I tried. This is a serious attempt to match the blue as best that I could. So I don't know if this was the shirt you were inspired by, Chris, but there it is. Within 24 hours after notice and the general, I think uh, those are the words specifically you wanted us to use. Yes, Mr. President. Within 24 hours, you're all set to go, and massive amounts will be delivered through our great military, and the general is... Uh, one of our best, and he is ready to go. We'll have manufactured at least 100 million vaccine doses before the end of the year, and likely much more than that. Hundreds of millions of doses will be available every month, and we expect to have enough vaccines for every American by April. And uh, again, I'll say that even at that later stage, the delivery will go as fast as it comes they can deliver. They're very good. Best, I think, probably the best in the world. The estimates I'm providing today are based on the manufacturing that's in process, and that's in process immediately right now. We've already exceeded our ambitious goals under the defense. Currently. It's in process currently, not immediately right now. Right now it's fine, but immediately, no. That means it's about to be in for anyway. Production Act contracts that we've secured, we may even get far above these numbers. The numbers that I'm telling you today, I think we'll exceed them very, very substantially. And I think that also includes distribution. I think distribution will go. He is up playing the numbers. Even quicker than most people think. I'm relying on our military. Everything I've done with our military has worked out very well. In a short time, we'll have a safe and effective vaccine and we'll defeat the virus. Interestingly, as I was saying, that uh, go very well, just like uh, what we did with our military with respect to ISIS went very well, long ahead of schedule. Uh, they have been incredible in working with me. Let's go to Puerto Rico. Uh, because ISIS? Because Puerto Rico's been uh, hit very, very hard by a lot of different storms, and they're great people. Again, this is going for the Hispanic vote. So he waited. He waited. You know, Hurricane Maria was, oh, what was it, what, last week, I think? But this is what happened. It's a great place. I know it well. Great place. Today, my administration's making the largest emergency relief award in history to rebuild Puerto Rico's electrical grid and educational system. We're awarding $13 billion to permanently repair and replace thousands of miles of transmission and distribution lines that should have been done many years ago. This was beyond even the storms. This was just age and a lot of the salt. The salt from that 
ocean is a killer for electrical stations and power generation systems. But on top of the salt, you had these massive storms or hurricanes come in, and Maria in particular. I, I hope that nobody told him that Puerto Rico doesn't get any electoral college votes because but he's trying to win Florida. That's there's a lot of Puerto Ricans in Florida, especially more since Hurricane Maria uh, last week. Right. Hurricane Maria was last week. So he's immediately he's on the ball here. It was a disaster. But for many years, they've been trying to get this done and they have been had the political willpower in Washington to get it done. So we're going to get it done for them. We're also going to be bringing back very, very major amounts of medical work. You know, we used to have pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical manufacturing at levels that few places had, and a lot of it's left Puerto Rico, and we're going to bring that back, especially. He is, he is correct, though. Big water does have salt. Now, since our emphasis is going to be making our product, so we're going to bring pharmaceutical manufacturing back to Puerto Rico. A lot of it left over the years, over a long period of time. It's been leaving and going to China and other places. So we're bringing all of that back. This was done in previous administrations. I'd like to just point out we've done more for Puerto Rico than anybody. And this is just an example of it. But we've done more for Puerto Rico by far than anybody. We'll also be launching a major effort to repair and renovate the schools across the island. Following Hurricane Maria, my administration immediately deployed the full power of the federal government to bring the electric grid back online so they could at least temporarily. And uh, it certainly wasn't a permanent fix. It was ripped to shreds. Uh, but a lot of that was ripped to shreds long before even the storm came in for many, many years. They've been trying to do it. But we wanted to restore water supplies, and we did make emergency repairs to critical infrastructure, which we took care of, and saved countless lives, which we did. FEMA's response in Puerto Rico included the longest sustained air mission supplying food and water in American history. We supplied it for long after the hurricane was gone, the largest disaster commodity distribution mission in U.S. history, and the largest sea bridge operation in federal disaster aid. U.S. history. My administration. Where, where else are we going to have a sea bridge? I mean, Hawaii, I guess, but that would have to be an air bridge. U.S. Virgin Islands. This is three years ago, and he's just now getting around to being like, yeah, let's get that electrical br uh, bridge finished. By the way, uh, we all remember uh, that the firm that was originally given the contract to restore the electricity in Puerto Rico, uh, they were friends of Ryan Zinke's. Was it Whitefish, Montana? Where was it? Ryan Zinke, who eventually had to resign in disgrace because of corruption, taking money and going, by the way, going uh, to using government funds to go give a pep talk to the Las Vegas Golden Knights hockey team, which is owned by a big Trump donor, all on your dime. The Las Vegas Golden Knights, who just lost and are now out of the Stanley Cup, so they do not make the finals. And that's good news. also prepositioned vast quantities of relief supplies for the future disasters. But unfortunately, Puerto Rico's in, uh, in the way of a lot of different storms, a lot of hurricanes. And the island is now stocked with nearly eight times as much drinking water and 13 times as much food as it had before it took office. So they're ready Good. to go if something should happen. Uh, they got brushed by a storm recently, but uh, they're uh, in a good position. So we're going to bring back medical distribution and manufacturing to Puerto Rico and at a level far greater than it was before. And uh, it's been emptied out. It's been largely, it largely left the island for many years. Uh, one point it was, uh, it was the talk of the world and now it's the talk of the world in a different way. We're bringing it back. So we're going to be bringing it what? back from various other parts of the world. It's going to. Yeah, when it got ravaged by a hurricane, in September of 2017, it was the talk of the world. Right now, honestly, nobody's, we've been in chat. Has anybody mentioned Puerto Rico before right now when Trump brought it up? Has anyone done that today? Puerto Rico, and I think that's gonna be very exciting for the people. And we're undertaking the largest federal investment in. And now what we've done is we have more hay for the horse in the barn than ever before we have bales and bales of hay 
uh, at a greater level, uh, 35 bales of hay at a level that Obama never had the hay. Uh, we haven't seen the horse in a few years. The barn door was that we've shut the barn door and we're hoping that the horse is able to figure out how to, well, horses, tremendously smart horses. Nobody's seen a horse this smart uh, since uh, Mr. Ed, which is a documentary from Puerto Rico's history. So you have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of friends in Puerto Rico and I've told them about it, asked them about it, con conceptually, what do you think? And they're very excited. A lot of friends. I just want to say, by contrast, uh, Biden's yep. devastated the island of Puerto Rico. Has he, he? Joe Biden, what he's done to Puerto Rico. Really? Meaning the past administration is, uh -huh. is devastating. How so? Uh, in 1996, Biden voted to eliminate a critical is this about Desposito? ...tax provision that had allowed Puerto Rico to become a dominant player in global pharmaceutical manufacturing. That's what happened. When Biden voted to repeal this provision, the pharmaceutical industry was ripped out of Puerto Rico. All incentive to stay there was taken away. And all of the jobs went to China and other places, but mostly to China. That's what happened. Uh, it's much more complicated than that. And 60 Minutes already did an expose on this a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks, a couple of years back several years back and why isn't puerto rico a state which the democrats want to make a state and that solves a lot of the problems because you know when bills are passed uh the federal government doesn't care if the bill helps red states blue states it doesn't matter it's helping americans right it's helping the states and the states have a equal representation because they're states well they don't have equal representation, but that's another story anyway uh, and so you'll never, ever get a time when, uh, for example, Mitch McConnell might say, I don't want to pass this bill because I don't like the blue states. You'll never ima just imagine a president saying, for example, let's say there's some sort of uh, natural disaster and a meteor hits the country and the, the president would never say like, oh, but if you take out all the deaths in the blue states because everyone's an American, that would never, ever happen. Anyway, uh, Joe Biden set uh, Puerto Rico on fire because of Antifa. Happened. This was done with a vote of uh, Biden. This was even before the Obama administration. This was uh, this oh. was early on, but so uh, so sad, sad that that was done. And then Obama sad. came in and it got worse. Ooh. So for the people of Puerto Rico, I'm just so glad that President Trump has finally reached out to the president of Puerto Rico. And there are negotiations going on. He should get a Nobel Peace Prize for that. Uh, they were a disaster for you. And I have to say, in a very nice way, a very respectful way, I'm the best thing that ever happened to Puerto Rico. Nobody even close. But as a result, the island's economy under the previously mentioned names, uh, it just absolutely cratered. Biden's vote also left the United States at the mercy of foreign suppliers for essential medicines, putting our national security and our health at risk. We had a tremendous industry potentially going to Puerto Rico, and they just absolutely cut it short with bad votes and took all the incentive away, and it went to other places, faraway lands. So they really, in a sense, were voting to destroy Puerto Rico, and we're bringing Puerto Rico back. And we'll have it done fairly quickly. And the $13 billion is, uh, that's a tremendous, that's a tremendous amount of money, but it's a very important amount. And I think you're going to see something terrific. And it's very exciting to me. What the most exciting is bringing the whole pharmaceutical industry back. We've spoken to various companies and they're willing to go there. Uh, they want to have. I am 98% sure he thinks the pharmaceutical industry is it helps the farmers. A little bit of help, but they're willing to go to Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico is going to be very exciting what's going to happen. Uh, they were on the verge of doing it, and they took away all the incentives. I don't know how that was allowed to happen, but they allowed it to happen. That was very, very bad for Puerto Rico and the people of Puerto Rico. That was done by Democrats, and uh, a Republican is bringing it back. So with that, we can take a few questions. and. Uh, we uh, are, again, very advanced on the vaccine. Uh, we think that sometime in the you know, very near future we'll have it. We're, I would say, I think I can say uh, years ahead of schedule what it would be if it were an administration other than this one. It would have been 
you would have been years before you ever had anything approved by the FDA. John, please. Mr. President, this, this huge aid package to Puerto Rico, uh, why not a year ago? Why not two years ago? Why not three years ago? Why 46 days to the election? Because what we're doing is we've been working on it for a long time to get it passed. Very tough to how how he didn't have to pass anything. Get things passed, Democrats, where they don't want to see this happen, and they probably certainly didn't. Watching the live feed, uh, questions coming up from OAN, so we got that to look forward to. Didn't want to see it happen at this point, but it's a big package. It's a great package, and I think the most exciting part of the package isn't necessarily the billions of dollars. It's going to be what we do with the pharmaceutical industry. We're going to get them back into Puerto Rico. They liked being there, but. They changed the tax situation. They ripped it out. So they really ripped apart the island, and we're going to bring it back, John. It, it, it may be simply coincidental, but it does coincide with the big push for Puerto Rican voters that the Biden-Harris campaign. Yeah, I think that that's pro Well, they can't do anything. Look, the Biden-Harris campaign, what they did, they hurt. Uh, you know, I've gone through it. And whether it was President Obama or Vice President Biden, they were a disaster for Puerto Rico, a disaster. And... Uh, what we're doing and what we've done, but what we're doing is something that uh, will be fantastic for many years in the future. Bringing back the pharma pharmaceutical industry, manufacturing in Puerto Rico is what they've wanted for years, and we're doing that in addition to the $13 billion. Yes, please. Uh, and I just want to say we've also today announced a sweeping package to help the people of Florida after Hurricane Andrew left them so devastated. And you know what? It never should have happened. It never should have happened. If uh, President, whoever was president at the time, could have been Clinton, a lot of people are saying it was uh, George W. Bush. Uh, if it's, it never should have, Hurricane Andrew left Florida, and Florida's such a great, great state. So we're putting that together. Also, I just want to announce that uh, my administration, uh, for the first time, is uh, sending aid to uh, New Jersey for the Hindenburg disaster. We really want to support the dirigible industry, and it's been so it's been so hard. It's they've talked against it so strongly for so many, and it's about time. It's really about time. We're also going to be linking the railroad uh, in Pennsylvania. So many, so many of the people of Pennsylvania. What else is there? Another swing state. Wisconsin, we just want to say uh, we will be, has anything ever happened in Wisconsin? Never, it's never happened, nothing not in Wisconsin. Mr. President, I, I, Mr. President, I think I heard you right saying that you said that there should, you expect to have enough vaccines for every American by April. So as we sit here in mid-September and there have been questions about the timeline, can you walk us through now and the beginning of April, sure. to which every American can have a vaccine. Sure, and, and I think we may like. exceed those numbers even. Scott, do you want to discuss that quickly? Sure. Uh, as has been said many times. Okay. Uh, you know, we have all the people that are involved in the actual vaccine distribution here. Good. Bring in the guy who takes x rays. But uh, we were just uh, going through. Bring in the guy who no longer works at Stanford. Bring in the guy that 78 of his Stanford medical colleagues says doesn't believe in science. Bring him in. Do this. As of the end of the year, we will have uh, over 100 million doses manufactured. The people who are in the prioritized list of... There are three different vaccines being manufactured by the government right now. Three different ones. So really, we're going to have 33 million. By the way, you need two doses. So that's really about 15 million people. But let's not be picky about who killed whom. Including high risk, including first responders, will have uh, the ability to take the vaccine. No one's being mandated to be vaccinated at, at the latest in January. And as we said uh, yesterday, and or I think yesterday, uh, the there will be hundreds of millions of doses delivered for people to take it during the first quarter, and so that by April, every single American who wants to be vaccinated will have the uh, ability to be vaccinated. It's okay. They're probably going with the thirty percent figure when recent polls have showed about thirty percent of people have said, like, yeah, I'll take the vaccine right away. Uh, but <laughs> But I mean, if they if they want to go that route, yeah. So, yes, we're going to have a vaccine, but you know, a lot of people don't want it. So, it's not a force. 
I hope I hope he's right. I hope he's dead on and everything is great and that the radiologist who said that only about 10,000 people are going to die from COVID, I hope he is absolutely accurate. Vaccination. Of I hope he's downplaying it. Of course. Dr. Fauci said today, uh, basically echoed Dr. Redfield's comments that Q2, Q3, some point the summer of next year, the entire country potentially, or at least as many Americans that need to be vaccinated will be vaccinated. Is, is that the we timeline? That yeah, we think we will. Next summer. Yeah, the that's, that's on the outer edge. We think we can beat that number very substantially. And on TikTok, sir, if you don't, if you don't mind, um, you, the Commerce Department essentially gave you a runway today to strike a deal after the election. Do you expect a TikTok deal before the election or after the election? I think it could go quickly. We have uh, great companies talking to us about it. You know about Oracle. You know Microsoft has been involved. And let's see whether or not they're continuing to be uh, involved. Uh, Walmart is truly a great company. They're very much involved. They want to do something. So we have some great options. And maybe we can keep a lot of people happy, but have the security that we need. We have to have the total security from China. We're just no, we're not going to do anything to jeopardize security. At the same time, it's it's an amazing company and very, very popular. So if we can do a combination of both, I'd be very happy doing that. Could go very quickly, though. Could go very, very fast. Yeah, please. And might not. Could go very, very slowly, too. Either way, uh, the app is coming down off the App Store. So if you want yourself some TikTok, uh, TikTok, get it now. I would advise not getting it. Mr. President, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Kuwaiti. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on Kuwait. So the ambassador to the Kuwaiti ambassador to Austria this week told the IAEA that the Kuwaiti government is very concerned over Iran's constant breaching of the JCPOA. In your discussions with the Kuwaitis today, have you discussed where they stand this week as we go into the UN as the United States tries to? That's the Iran nuclear deal, by the way. Extend sanctions on Iran? Well, they just left my office, as you know, the Oval Office. And we had a very good meeting with the Emir. And uh, I think we understand each other very well. They're uh, uh, very excited about a lot of things that are happening in the Middle East. They, they are so excited that we signed the first two countries. And I think they'll end up uh, fairly quickly being a part of it. I have, I would say, seven or eight countries that want to be a part of it without even working uh, very easily, very quickly. Nobody thought this would happen, and, and not only is it happening, it's happening rather easily. We discussed that very briefly, because that's, that's an easy one. Believe it or not, that whole thing is now a beautiful puzzle that's coming together very nicely. Uh, but we are uh, talking to them and others about various... Trump can't even read the name of a city off of a teleprompter, so no, Trump cannot find Kuwait on a map aspects of the Middle East. The Middle East is straightening out with all that's happening. You know, we've brought a lot of our troops back. Uh, a lot of them are coming back in the very near future. Uh, we're out of Syria. Other than we kept the oil, I kept the oil. And uh, we have troops guarding the oil. Other than that, we're out of Syria. We took them off the border between Syria and Turkey. We had a lot of troops on the border. Ultimately, we got it down to 50, and I thought they were in great danger when you have two armies sitting there looking to fight. And you have 50 people in the middle. I don't care who you are, even if the, you're the U.S., those 50 people are in great danger. We took them out. But we had a lot of troops on the border, and we took them out. I said, look, they've been fighting on their border for 200 years, and a lot longer than that under different names. And they can continue to do that. That's not for us. We're guarding our own borders. We're doing very well. What about the allies, the Kurds who lost 11,000 people? getting rid of ISIS. Remember the thing that you keep taking credit for? The caliphate specifically? It was the Kurds who fought and won that war for us. And then we deserted them and hundreds of them died. Oh, well, moving on. I'm so great. I handled the coronavirus. Very well on our southern border as an example. So we're out of Syria, except we kept the oil and we'll make a determination. We'll probably be dealing with the Kurds on the oil and see what it all ends up, but we'll be out. And uh, very dealing with the Kurds, what did he call them? He said, wasn't final solution. He said something about cleaning, cleansing. Cle the Turkey wanted him to cleanse Syria. I, I have that somewhere. Very importantly, uh, we're down to very few soldiers in Iraq. And uh, we're down, 
will be down very shortly over the next couple of weeks to 4,000, less than 4,000 in Afghanistan. And uh, then we'll make that final determination a little bit later on. We're dealing very well with the Taliban. They're very tough. They're very smart. They're very sharp. But, you know, it's been 19 years, and even they are tired of fighting, in all fairness. And we really served as a police force, because if we wanted to do what we had to do, we would have fought a lot differently than they have over the 19 years. They didn't fight it properly. They were, they were uh, police, okay? They're not police. They're, they're uh, soldiers. So there's a difference. The police, nobody has more respect for police than I do, but they have to do their own policing. So we're having some very good discussions with the Taliban, as you probably heard. It's been public. And uh, but we'll be down to very shortly. We'll be down to less than 4,000 soldiers, and uh, so we'll be out of there. Knowing that uh, certain things have to happen, certain things have to be fulfilled. But 19 years is a long time. 8,000 miles away. 19 years is a long time. And uh, this is the president talking about uh, the Kurds. Uh, I'll make it big. A process started at terrorists. They had a lot of people in there that they couldn't have. They've suffered a lot of loss of lives also. And they had to have it cleaned out. But once you start that, it gets to be to a point where a tremendous amount of bad things can happen. He was talking about uh, Turkey. The strongman Erdogan asked him to clean out the Kurds. Clean out Syria. So he obliged. He, he cleaned out. He cleansed Syria. Uh, that was, uh, let's see, October of 2019. Uh, nope, it was a little bit before that. Uh, no, it was about, that's about right. October of 2019, when he said we needed to cleanse the Kurds, our allies. Not just, not just the Turkish, uh, Kurdish terrorist group, but all the Kurds had to get the hell out of the northern region of Syria. Uh, and we were outraged for two weeks. And uh, the Middle East, the whole Middle East uh, equation, if you look at what's happened, if you've looked at the stupidity of decisions that were made, including the deal that was made, I mean, take a look at what happened with Iran. Had that deal stayed, had I not broken that deal, you could have never done the deal that I'm doing now, where all the countries are pouring in. And I had two calls this morning with countries that want to know, when can we go into the deal? They want to go. It's not that we're giving anything. They want security. They want peace. And they're really tired of fighting. It's incredible. They're tired of fighting. They've been fighting for so many years. They're tired of fighting. Thank you very much. Mr. President. Okay. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President, a question on the vaccine, but first uh, on Puerto Rico. I, I heard you many times over the past couple of years saying that Puerto Rico got too much money. I yep. mean, just last year you said uh, Puerto Rico is one of the most corrupt places on earth. Yep. Well, we talked about how Congress has sent too they much have money. money. But, 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 but you, you, you said never again. You said Congress gave too much money to Puerto Rico. Why now? Because are you we're building it up as a great medical pharmaceutical manufacturing area where, you know, we're going to be taking back a lot of the business that we let go for years. And we're, bring, we're going to bring it back. They were very good at it. They did a fantastic job, but they destroyed it with their tax policy. They made it impossible for people to stay. So people went to China, mostly, and to other countries. Uh, Puerto Rico has been very corrupt in terms of its politicians. You see that. They're one after another. Uh, it's been unbelievably corrupt. And we're studying that and working on that. And we think we have a good group of people. We're working very well with the politicians right now. But I think more exciting than the, than the dollars, and you have to do something with respect to their grid. Their grid is a disaster. Their generators are wiped out. And they've been wiped out for years, long before Maria came. They've been wiped out for years. So if we can build Puerto Rico. The infrastructure did get noticeably worse after the hurricane. You know, overhead wires and whatnot. Go back into a pharmaceutical manufacturing area uh, we're gonna oh I should post I should post a parlor if you guys want to get couches in here I yeah I can post uh, what we're doing here to parlor if I ever get yeah I you know what we would start getting them in droves designated as such I think 
Is actually anybody on par? I'm not sure anybody's actually on par. It'll be unbelievable for Puerto Rico, unbelievable for the people of Puerto Rico, and we can make it very successful. And a, and a larger question on the, on the vaccine and, and on, on, on other issues regarding the experts in your government. Uh, last night, you, uh, you criticized what Christopher Wray told Congress, your FBI director. You obviously said that the CDC director was flat wrong on a couple of things uh, this week. Uh, how is it that uh, you don't trust your own experts. Do you, do you, do you think oh, you do. know better than they do? No, do I think I think I have. Yeah, I, in many cases I do. Obviously, said that the CDC director was flat wrong on a couple of things uh, this week. Uh, how is it that uh, you don't trust your own experts? Do you, do you, oh, do you think I you do. know better not than all they of them. do? No, do I think I think. Oh, I do. Not all of them. That's what he said. I think I have. Yeah, I, in many cases I do. Trusting his uh, experts. I think uh, we. In many cases, I trust my experts, but not all, no. We have a bigger problem with China than we have with Russia. I think China is a far bigger problem. And I said, well, that's... Uh, what the intelligence agencies have said is that Trump or that China would prefer to have Biden win. Most of the international community uh, would rather have Biden win because he's a sane human being and uh, much more predictable than a Trump. That's the big problem with many countries for Trump because they have no idea what the fuck he's going to do. We don't know what the fuck he's going... Well, I mean, I, I know what he's going to do. He's going to do stupid things. And I'm right every single time. He's about to say something stupid right now. I guarantee it. He's about he's about to say that uh, Christopher Ray got it wrong, that he didn't define uh, Antifa correctly, that he doesn't pay enough attention to, to China. It's okay if you want to think about Russia, but what about China? Uh, I think that's a problem. Russia is actively inter trying to interfere with our election, actively right now. They don't see that China's doing it. They might be, but the intelligence community has not seen it. Uh, I thought that the definition of uh, Antifa was an absolutely incorrect definition, so I speak up. I like to speak up. Uh, uh, Christopher Wray, the head of the FBI, appointed by Trump, by the way, uh, said that Antifa is uh, not an organization, that they're much more of an ideology or a movement, and he doesn't agree with that. He thinks that there's actually like a, a, the League of Antifa. And they have buildings that they go to when they have their meetings at Starbucks. I have fantastic people. That's why we're able to make these great trade deals. That's why we're able to do things like we're doing today. That's why uh, the country has done so well. The country's done numbers like nobody had. We not had the China plague come in. If we, we did have the China plague come in. That's what happened. We had it. If, the, if that virus didn't come in, the plague, I call it, the plague from China didn't come in, the numbers we had were were not only record set, they were beyond anything anyone's ever seen in any country, frankly. Now, no. we closed it up. 2.3% GDP. And now yeah. we're opening it up. And by the way, the Democrats ought to open up their states and they ought to open them up fast, John. The faster. No, David, the, they're not an organization. The multiple planes with the people wearing black and carrying gear all of them Antifa going to Washington, D.C., and also leaving Washington to go to Seattle. All of those, it's, those are coincidental. The better because they're hurting their people. A lot of damage done with these extended shutdowns. But we saved millions of lives by doing it the way we did it. And now we're opening it up, and you see the kind of numbers, the manufacturing numbers, see the retail numbers. You look at the employment numbers. They're setting all terrible records. It's an incredible thing that's happening. Had the plague not come in, we would have been right now at a level that nobody's ever seen before. Nobody's ever seen. But even before, it was at the highest stock market, best. We were having a manufacturing contraction. Unemployment yeah. numbers and employment numbers. We're up to 160 million people, just short of 160 million people employed. We were never close to a number like that. Well, the, the population increases, so every president sees a record of the number of people employed. That's the way it works. And now we're doing it again. And next year, we will have a great economic year. I think one of our best. Yeah. The Postal Service had planned on sending 650 million face masks to Americans back in April. That never happened. Uh, why not? And was it because I don't know. I, I don't run it, to be honest. That's run, as you know, that's run by a commission. And uh, they run it, uh, I think, frankly, no, if they would raise the price of. There's a postal commission that is independent of the USPS 
that approves things, uh, but they don't actually run the day-to-day -day operations of the of the post office. It would have been Joy, correct me if I'm wrong, David, uh, that would approve things or disapprove. Uh, but the post commission is independent. They do things like, for example, oh, we want to charge 54 cents for a stamp. And they look at it and they say, yeah, that makes sense. Or they say, no, you need to charge more, et cetera. Um, so they are in charge, but they don't run the day-to-day -day operations. That breaks down to people within the management of the USPS itself. The packaging, you'd end up making a lot of money or breaking even or doing something. The post office has been what? a mess by a commission, and uh, they run it. Uh, I think, frankly, if they would raise the price of packaging, you'd end up and we're talking about packaging. We were talking about a pandemic a second ago, but he's saying that we don't charge Amazon enough. Speaking of breaking news, David Mickelson says they say the Amazon founder is, oh wait, uh, protesters are currently marching through Medina. That is the ultra wealthy enclave east of Seattle. Uh, it is, it's uh, right near Bellevue, Washington. It's right on the shores of Lake Washington. It's a beautiful neighborhood. All of those houses are worth multi-million dollars. It is the second or third. There's Yarrow Bay, Hunts Point, and Medina. They are one, two, three, four, five. Uh, they're all in the top five uh, for wealthiest cities in the United States per capita. Make it a lot of money or break your knee. Uh, they say the Amazon founder, Bezos, is hoarding wealth and exploiting workers. Meanwhile, the police department is posting an update every time the group moves or doing something, the post office has been a mess for many, many generations, but for certainly decades, and it loses a lot of money. It's always lost a lot of money. And one of the reasons it loses a lot of money now is that it's delivering all these packages, and every time they deliver a package, they lose $3 a package or whatever the number may be. So I would suggest that they raise the price of that is inaccurate. packages. And uh, you might get something where it loses very little or maybe broke even or maybe even made some money. Can you imagine a thing like that? And uh, whether it's Amazon or any of the other internet delivery services, uh, if you did that, you'd have a whole different post office. So hopefully they'll be doing that. In the meantime, uh, We're watching I know so many people in the postal system, and I've known them over the years. They're incredible people. And uh, they're very secure. They're going to be very secure. You know, the problem they have with the ballots, not the post office, the problem they have with the ballots is the people sending the ballots and the people counting the ballots. And who are they sending them to? Where are they being sent? Are they being sent to the wrong areas? Are they not being sent at all? There'll be tremendous uh, corruption if they don't do something about it. Now, uh, one big hope is that we're in front of numerous federal judges in Nevada, we're in front in Pennsylvania, as you know. We're in front in uh, Michigan. We have numerous court cases out there that are very well advanced, and you'll start seeing decisions just like we won the case on opening up Pennsylvania. That was a great decision by a judge uh, that came down two days ago, and that was a very important decision. So, uh, but we have a lot of very important decisions coming down on this on the scam of unsolicited ballots, where they're sending out tens of millions of ballots to everybody, people that didn't expect them, people... No, there's 50 million ballots being sent out to people that do expect them, because they've always expected them at elections. They vote by mail. Washington, Utah, Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon. Getting inundated. In California, I've registered to permanently receive my ballot by mail. There's dozens of states like this. With, uh, they'll be showered with ballots. Every I will not be showered with ballots. Everybody in this room knows it's a scam. Okay? Everybody in this room. Even John. Don't say it, John, because a it's a scam. A scam. Sending ballots. That's John uh, Carl. Jonathan Carl with ABC News. What's a scam? What's a scam? Sending ballots at a level a they are never going to be able to count them. What about it is a scam? Let me ask you. Don't your officials vote by mail, sir? People in the White House. Don't their officials vote by mail? That is uh, Caitlin with CNN. Vote by mail. And they vote the scam. But that's different. That's sounds, sounds like Caitlin. I don't know if it's Caitlin. It's called solicited. When you solicit, when you go out, it's called absentee or solicit. When you go out and you request a ballot, you want to say, I want to vote because I can't be in Florida or I can't be someplace. You request. So you're sending something in. It's handled professionally. Uh, almost, Colleen. I believe... 
fifteen percent of the votes cast by uh, fifteen percent of the votes for Trump were cast by mail. So about a quarter of the ballots. Uh, oh, so I, I I don't know. I don't. You could be right about that, but I think the statistic you're saying the statistic backwards. Uh, go ahead and take a look at it, and if you think it's true, absolutely, we'll just accept it. What the hell? They send it back. It's a whole thing. That's much different than unsolicited. When you get millions of ballots, I heard numbers like 80 million ballots. Now, it's not correct. Just this week, they had another one, another one of the disasters that took place, an election. But look at what happened in New Jersey, and they had another one in New Jersey. I'm still, I have not found any evidence of what he's talking about with this disaster that happened this week. Crazy, very, very bad, different than Patterson. Look at what happened in New York with Carolyn, uh, Car your congressman, Murphy. Maloney. Uh, Maloney. Maloney. Carolyn Maloney. Maloney. Look at that, I mean, look at that race. Carol Murphy is the governor of Jersey. Carolyn Maloney had a race. It was a disaster. Ballots are missing, ballots are fraud. These are small races. These are, look at what happened in Virginia. Look at what happened at various other parts of the country, even over the last short period of while. And these aren't 80 million. I, I, and I got to say, I always give him a break when it comes to names because I am absolutely terrible with names. So when President Truman makes a mistake with names, I don't, I, I don't hold that against him. Million or 50 million or 20 million votes. These are small elections. These are congressional elections where, in theory, it's easy. So what's going to happen on November 3rd when somebody's leading and they said well what we haven't counted the ballots we have millions of ballots to count so the solution here is to push states to start counting the ballots early as many states do so the mail-in ballots are coming in go ahead and run them through the machines so they come election night boo here's your results keep them a secret you can program the computers not to release those results until they they're asked for it's not just one guy sitting in a basement who's 400 pounds at the end of his bed in Macedonia, that's not how it's run. It's a disaster. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it's a disaster. And I don't expect people here to say, although some people will, some people would say it. Everyone knows. You don't even have to know politics to know. And this has nothing to do with post office, by the way. Where are these ballots going? Who's sending them? Who's signing them? You have in Nevada, you have- This is all recorded. It's. People know how this works. We've been doing it. I have a governor that signs something where he doesn't even want verification. It's not true. He wants two verifications. In other words, when uh, ballots come in, the trouble with mail-in ballots, there is a problem with mail-in ballots, and it's been rectified in most of the states that take mail-in ballots. The problem with mail-in ballots, absentee ballots that Trump votes with, absentee, mail-in, whatever you want to call them, just let's just stick to absentee. For example, in Florida, 2% of absentee ballots were rejected in 2009, 2010, whenever the study was done. Could have been 2008. Could have been 2012. 2% uh, of uh, the ballots that came in in Florida. Could be every election. I don't know. Here's the, the, the what I do know is 2% of the ballots were rejected compared to 1% of ballots that are cast in person. Uh, so the problem is that those ballots are rejected because of mismatched signatures. And that can be, for example, sometimes I will sign my name with a T for my middle initial. Some, sometimes I sign it without the T. They'll be rejected in Florida. That's a problem. So what they did in Nevada, where it was a case where a whole bunch of uh, ballots were rejected because, well, this looks like a K. Is that a K? That's not a K. Okay, reject it. Um, what has to happen in Nevada now is that two people have to actually reject it. And if it is rejected, then the voter gets contacted and is asked, is this you? And the voter is able to say yes or no. And so it's counted. So this whole no signature verification, no, it's literally tripled the signature verification. But he doesn't understand how work things. That's what I says. Of the signature. So what does that mean? So he doesn't even want verification of the signature. So I think it's going to be a why doesn't somebody, why doesn't someone in the press room right there say, sir, that's not true. He wants double verification. Why, why not? Why? I mean, I know they're busy. They don't have the kind of time that I have. I get it. No, they haven't read the law that was passed by the legislature and the governor and will be in a terrible time for this country. And we're counting on federal judges to do a great constitutional job 
when they are, they're right now analyzing it. Many, many federal judges, many, like, I think five or six, but many federal judges, I can tell you, in Pennsylvania, big, in uh, Nevada, very big. What? I believe it's an institutional job. I can tell you now, when they Pennsylvania, are, They're big. right now analyzing it. Many, Nevada, many federal judges, big. many, like, I think five or six, but many uh -huh. federal judges, I can tell you, in Pennsylvania, big, in uh, uh -huh. Nevada, very big. Very I believe big. it's in front of a judge in Michigan. We have a lot of judges have not yet ruled on this. Is it big? Is is it big in Michigan? Yes, but uh, if it's ruled in a different manner or it's ruled uh, where uh, these millions and millions of unsolicited people that aren't even asking, there's such a difference. You They're registered to vote. When you register to vote, you're asking to vote. That's how it works. Right in, you ask, they send it to you, you sign it, you send it back, that's perfect. That's absentee. There's nothing like going to the voter booth, by the way, nothing, where they check you as you go in. There's nothing like that. But that's absentee, that's okay. But the scam of sending millions and millions of votes, and you know who knows this better than I do? The Democrats. They know it's going to be a mess. They know it's going to, they're going to be millions of missing ballots or tremendous numbers of missing ballots. You can and when you lose, you're going to claim that you would have won, except that the ballots are missing. You'll be talking about large percentages of these ballots are going to be missing. There's going to be fraud. It's a disaster. And everybody, and it'll be a lot easier for me not to bring it up, but everybody knows I'm Okay, take the easy route. Right. I mean, ride that golf cart. And you don't have to know a lot about elections. You don't have to know a lot about politics. This is going to be the scam. Uh, TDS stands for The Daily Show. Am of all time, and hopefully the federal judges, all respected, all highly respected, hopefully they'll be able to see this. Yes, also Democrats are better at sticking together. Clearly and stop it. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. So I want to congratulate Puerto Rico, and I think you're going to have a great period of time. I think you're going to see a rebuilding of Puerto Rico. Thank you very much. So there you have it. The headlines really made toward the end there about the, the election. Let's get to all of this right now as we uh, bring in Democratic Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania. Oh. Uh, sir, he applauds the decision that was made in Pennsylvania to allow votes to be received up to three days after the election, so long as they're postmarked by Election Day. But um, it's clear that he, he drew a distinction between absentee ballots and unsolicited ballots where a state, in this case not Pennsylvania, but other states, yeah, most of the states don't aren't doing the automatic sending out of ballots anyway. I think it's is it nine states total, five of which have are always done it, not always, five of which have been doing it for a while. Uh, but I think it's it might be higher than nine now. But the last time I checked, it was nine. Would send out ballots to everyone. Oh wait, sorry, I forgot, guys. We got to go back here. My bad. Hold on. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about this. They'll be able to see this clearly and stop it. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. So I want to congratulate Puerto Rico, and I think you're going to have a great period of time. I think you're going to see a rebuilding of Puerto Rico. Thank you very much. So there you have it. The headlines really made toward the end there. About the, the election. With safety concerns, in Pennsylvania, we have changed the law. The General Assembly... A bipartisan vote in the General Assembly and signed by the governor uh, changed the law so that you could vote uh, earlier and vote uh, in Pennsylvania without uh, having to wait until Election Day. So if you are in Pennsylvania and you are voting absentee, send that in early and don't send it in. Take it to a ballot box if there's one near you, um, because they are limiting the the, if you wait till the, the day of the election, it's got to get to the elections office within three days or it will not be counted, which is not enough time. We were going to be under a different. Did he adjust the mic? That's an excellent question. Uh, Rich, if producer Rich is the one asking, let us find out. Um, oh, no, he can't. No, they don't use. No, sorry, Rich. This is at the White House press briefing room. They don't use that kind of mic. It's the, the short mic. Um, so, no, he doesn't adjust the mics at the uh, press room. Nobody does. They're the ones that are way down below. Let's see what Casey's saying. Um, a big change in voting anyway. But, but I, look, I think the pre it's just it's bizarre the way the president continues to lie about this. Everyone knows that mail-in balloting works. It's been tried in a number of states for years. And it's ever more important now so that you can do two things at once. 
keep people safe make sure everybody gets canceled. Uh, so, I think the critics, I, 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 when you listen, not, to, uh, uh, states have done it. You're right. Oregon's been doing it for 20 years, but they have a system that's set right. up. Uh, and really, the yeah. criticism is not so much directed at the post office, but it's directed at the elections offices and whether or not they have the personnel and the manpower to handle all well, this. Well, Bill, on that, I, look, I think, I think Pennsylvania did a pretty good job in the primary the first time we ever had to do it with this volume. Uh, this will be a bigger volume in the fall. But Look, one of the failures of the last couple of months in Congress was uh, after 400, uh, 400 million for elections, which isn't that much in a, in a big country, uh, Democrats like me, I was not the leader of it, but I was helping other senators trying to get another 3.6 billion for, for elections. We haven't gotten that yet, but it would help enormously if states had more resources. But look, th this I, I think this is, is going to be an election where uh, we can still get every vote counted and give everybody a chance to vote safe. Senator, one more point here. You came on to talk about Joe Biden in Pennsylvania. He did a town hall last night on CNN. I want to go soundbite number two, guys. Uh, this is when the issue of fracking came up. There are hundreds of thousands of jobs in the state of Pennsylvania. Check it on Breitbart here. They are at outside the Trump rally in Minnesota. There are people lined up to watch. Uh, the feed is not coming up. This is this might be old. No, it says live. Come on, give me Periscope, Twitters. Let me refresh the page. So these, I hope they're doing interviews. The interviews are always great. Come on, there's 191 people watching this right now. No, okay. Well, we'll let that spin, and we might be wrapping up now. Uh, yay for Bemidji, says Colleen. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, there's going to be polling places, a lot more polling places than there was. I don't know why this is not coming up. It's possible they just uh, stopped the live stream, so I'm not really sure. Let's go and see if there's anything that happened while we were doing that. Early voting begins in Minnesota, Virginia, South Dakota, and Wyoming. I didn't know about uh, Wyoming. That's cool. Executing. What's the executing about? Uh, oh, okay. So this is the tweet that was making headlines. Okay, that's one hour. Uh, Trump says voting starts in Virginia today and we are going to win. You have a crazy governor who wants to take away your guns, which he will do without me in office. He can't. Uh, he is in favor of executing babies after birth. This isn't late-term abortion. This is a step way beyond. Yes, it's murder. Uh, vote for me. Dot, 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 dot. I'm, I'm playing for your guns. And I'm playing for your values. He's playing? Uh, for all the federal employees in Virginia, remember, it was me that got you the federal pay raises. Remember, he put a hold on federal pay raises. Not Sleepy Joe Biden. I'll be, by, there were several pay raises under Obama. Uh, I will be having a big rally in Virginia. To be announced soon. Okay, so that's the big tweet. Uh, 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 and Virginia is in play. And notifications, you guys aren't interested in that. Oh, hold on. There's a new, uh, the new video about uh, Ivanka. So let's just watch that and we'll get out of here. Come on, Bob. Bob, if you're watching, do you want to be on the live stream? Let's get Bob in here. You know him from he was on an episode of I'm Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Uh, here it is. This is about uh, Ivanka. Oh, she's a mini domo, and but yet he's besotted with her. Start it again. Yeah, she's a mini Donald. She's a mini domo, and but yet he's besotted with her. He always has been. She's always been his favorite. Ivanka Trump is so empty inside and achingly desperate for respect that she has her father repeatedly lie about her phony accomplishments. My daughter Ivanka, she's now created 14 million jobs. To put this lie in context, at the time, Trump said that his entire administration had created 5 million jobs. This is the factory in China where they make Ivanka's clothing line. Ivanka is a very good client, but of course, I never imagined her father would become president. The ties are made in where? China? China. Ties are made in China. There are 50 states that comprise the United States, and Ivanka didn't make a single piece of her clothing line in one of them. 
Ivanka Trump is a fraud. Everything about her life is a lie. She learned how to deceive from the world's greatest liar. She is anti-woman. Oh, I can guarantee my brothers were loving that. Are any of you up there single? <laughs> and anti-American. When she tried to step onto the world stage, foreign leaders ignored her as the incompetent embarrassment that she is. And the same with the defense side of it. Yeah. Um, in terms of the whole sort of it's been very male she claims to support maternity leave, but forced her employee, Marissa Velez Kraxberger, to come back to work just one week after giving birth. She was fined $2 million for stealing from her own charity. She was ordered by the state of New York to attend classes to learn how not to steal from charity. Imagine being so corrupt that a judge actually orders you to take classes on how to not be corrupt. So let's pop it up. She parades her kids on social media while her father puts children in cages. She's not pro-America. She's not pro-woman. She's just pro-Ivanka. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know? Stop it. Oh, it's so weird. Stop You know what? You are sick. I know, yeah. Isn't it terrible? Yeah. Okay. Well, I feel nauseous. I was going to grab some lunch. I don't, I don't know that I'm going to do that now. Uh, the only part, uh, the only problem I have with that is that uh, they did the, she's in front at the uh, front of the television at the Miss Universe or Miss Happy Time or whatever the pageant was and is like, some of them are single. Well, my brothers might be interested in because they're single. And yeah, that's, a, you know, people make that joke. That's, that's not a problem. No one's saying, hey, my brothers would like to have sex with one of them. It's, it's, it's not. Um, I don't think that demeans women. Because, I mean, I'm I'm looking, you know, I'm all about fantastic women. In or out of a beauty pageant, you know, doesn't. Uh, uh, but uh, overall, very very good ad. I don't know why we're airing that right now. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> just someone just really doesn't like Ivanka. Oh, okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Nikki Haley said something. I don't care. That's about it, kids. That was a three-hour broadcast, including the chat. So I've got some other things to do today. Uh, we may or may not, which mean the same thing, uh, be covering the Trump rally later today in Bemidji or wherever he is. Uh, I can't read it off the teleprompter. That's what I says. So we'll see you later on today or we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching the live stream. Thanks to, again, Chris Wilson for this fantastic logo that I can't make any bigger. There it is. Thanks again. Here are some new credits. Make sure you stick around to the very end to see your name. If your name is not in the credits and you'd like it to be, and it should be, let me know. If it's not in the credits and you'd like it to be, uh, the way we're able to do this is uh, because uh, people like you out there who care, you're supporting this. Uh, and the way you support it is to go to PayPal or to Venmo or go to KevinLeeFather.com. And when you go to KevinLeeFather.com, you can become a patron, you can become a register, you can become a protester, you can become an executive producer, you can be whatever you want. Um, uh, just go to Patreon. KevinLeeFather.com will get you there. Uh, we will be back the next time. As Kevinly Daughter said, we broadcast every single sometimes, and uh, we will see you. Here come the credits. Be good to each other. Wear your mask and uh, send something to Puerto Rico. That's what we're doing today, kids. Kevin, thanks for that.